Hello, welcome to another video. Um, this one uh, little, been a little bit of a request. Uh, Garth Booth, who I'm sure the majority of people who are subscribed to my channel will be subscribed to his, um, asked us if I had any stuff uh, on the Rhodesian Bush War, um, which I have. Uh, so the next pro couple of showcase videos um, will be on the Rhodesian setup. Um, Chose twenty millimeter um, just because of the the availability of um, of suitable figures. Um, I've had quite a, a long stand and interest in um, in the worn Rhodesia. Uh, really, probably from being about twelve, I managed. I was at school and I swapped some uh, uh, I don't know, Marvel comics for a copy of Soldier of Fortune magazine. This is my bees. I don't know, maybe 78, something like that, 77, 78. And there was an article on it uh, on the Seal of Scouts and also on the Rhodesian Light Infantry. Um, and that's where my interest sort of originated. Um, it continued and I, I served in the army with um, a guy who'd been uh, who'd been in the RLI. Um, and that sort of, my interest really went from there. Um, Books wise, there's quite a big selection. Um, this is one of my favorites. I bought this, this book here, uh, Seal of Scouts Top Secret War, um, in a military bookshop when I was in the army in Aldershot. Um, that'll have been probably 82, maybe 83. Um, and that really uh, sort of piqued me interest. Um, so what I decided to do wargaming wise, obviously 20 millimeter as I've discussed, because a lot of the engagements were quite small, it lends itself really to sort of skirmish war gaming. Um, so we're looking at things, uh, you know, it's like the Rhodesian Light Infantry, the Rhodesian SES, uh, Sealer Scouts. Um, uh, so the figures wise, um, I've used 90% uh, of them are probably Liberation. I've done some conversions, which I'll discuss uh, when we get down at the turntable. Um, uh, so I've got, um, I've done a, a number of bricks of Rhodesian Light Infantry that's primarily designed around their use in fire force operations, which was the um, helicopter-borne sort of rapid reaction force. The nice thing about that, wargaming-wise, is the um, it's a four-man brick. Uh, you might have four helicopters involved in the operation, so you're only looking at maybe 16 figures for the Rhodesians and obviously more for the rebels, uh, uh, guerrillas. Um, so if you weren't aware, basically, I'll quickly... The Rhodesian Light Infantry was quite similar to perhaps the Parachute Regiment in the British Army. Uh, it was an all-white unit um, based around uh, company-sized commandos. Um, rapid reaction, fire force operations also were involved in the numerous cross-border raids that the Rhodesians did. Um, then move on to the Rhodesian SES, which was uh, obviously the equivalent of the British SES. Um, they were involved in uh, sort of more reconnaissance work and uh, they also did a lot of uh, cross-border operations. Um, towards the end of the war in the late 70s, um, obviously they were basically involved in virtually everything. Um, and then the Sula Scouts, they're quite a well-known Special Forces unit. Um, and a lot of the photos you'll see uh, of them, they're dressed in sort of, obviously, Rhodesian camo, the brushstroke camo, Looking at Spoor, uh, and the, the Rhodesian military did quite a good job in disguising the role. They were sort of put out as a tracking unit. Um, this was supported by the obviously the PR people, uh, basically just to just uh, confuse um, the opposition. Uh, they were basically a pseudo um, a pseudo gang unit. And what that that originated in Malaya. Um, and basically, the Sealer Scouts were a, a mixed race unit, so you had black operators as well as white operators. Uh, and basically, so they disguised themselves as the opposition, so as Zangla uh, or Zapu, uh, go out into the bush, uh, ingratiate themselves with other, um, with genuine uh, terrorist groups, and obviously um, call in fire force or call in airstrikes on base camps. Uh, so that was the main role. So I've done a unit of them. Um, 
that they were involved in creating an unusual operation uh, called Op Virile in 1977, uh, which was a raid, a cross-border raid into Mozambique to, de to destroy some bridges. Um, they used a converted civilian bus um, with screens on the top and a hidden 12.7 millimeter machine gun. The reason I'm saying this is I modeled this vehicle, um, which will become apparent when we get down to the um, down to the turntable. Um, so that's where we are with the Rhodesians. Uh, we'll go down to the turntable now uh, and we'll go through the figures. So just before we do that, I thought it would be uh, appropriate to just shove uh, a close-up of the book I mentioned, Sealer Scouts Top Secret War, uh, written by uh, Ron Reed Daly, who was the commanding officer of the Scouts, um, uh, ghost written by Peter Stiff. It is quite a difficult to get a book to get a hold of now. I've seen it going some for, for some crazy prices. This is the original 1982 version, uh, but if you can get, um, it was reprinted a couple of times by various publishers. If you can get a copy, well, well worth reading. Uh, great background. Uh, it's an excellent book. Right, so here's the first uh, four-man brick. In all, I've got four four-man bricks, so 16 in total. Um, the organisation's basically the same. There was a, uh, an NCO leader type figure. Um, two guy, he had an FN. The other two guys in the brick had an FN and we had one guy with a, um, with a GBMG. Um, these are liberation figures. Um, he does them with the very typical Rhodesian uh, bush cap, which had the two peaks. They also had like the um, the standard bush hat with a brim all around. Uh, these figures are done for sort of fire force operations, sort of in maybe seventy seven ish. So that's when they were wearing tackies, which are the black uh, sort of uh, desert boots. Um, quite often wore shorts, just t shirts, very light equipment. They were heli born. In Alouette, uh, the drop down obviously to ambush the uh, ambush the terrorists. Um, painted using me um, me standard uh, techniques. As I mentioned before, if you've got uh, any queries, uh, just uh, bang a comment up. The Rhodesian camo brush stroke was quite distinctive, and that's what I've uh, tried to capture here. Um, I think for certainly in twenty millimeter for uh, for camo, it's you've got to just get the look and feel of the camo uh, more than anything. Um, and this uh, is is another obviously another uh, another brick, little bit conversion work. The guy kneeling with a GPMG, it was actually a Bren gun, I think. So I cut the magazine off, added an ammunition belt on, and obviously the bipod. Uh, so that's where we are with these figures. Right, Sealer Scouts done for pseudo operations. So the uh, the two external figures are obviously wearing uh, black is beautiful face paint and uh, wearing generic sort of to uh, uniforms. The centre guy was basically a, a conversion that I did, and it's just to show the black is beautiful. I think it was for a competition or something to show the black face paint. Uh, so that's why uh, he's there. He's not doing a Rambo thing or anything. Right, and this is a model of the bus I mentioned from Ob Virile that the scouts used on a cross-border raid into Mozambique. Uh, screens at the front of the uh, upper rack to hide a, um, uh, a dushka. Um, converted uh, a couple of 50 cals in the back. It was converted from a 176 die-cast bust. Basically repainted all the luggage and the rack on the top and the screens and the ladder added. Uh, repainted, dusted up. Um, and add it to a base. Uh, there are some photographs uh, available online. I think if you search for Ob Virile, you'll probably see them. Uh, it's not an exact copy, but it's as uh, I'm quite pleased with it. it was near as I could get it. Uh, obviously, the follow-on vehicles were standard Rhodesian uh, homemade armored cars. Right, a patrol of Grey Scouts. Um, these are, are the horses, I think, were World War II uh, Russian Cossacks, uh, obviously with liberation top halves, fairly 
quite big conversions on them. Uh, but they, they turned out, I'm, I'm quite pleased with them, they turned out quite nice. Obviously it'll have been very entertaining for the guy with the GPMG if he tried to fire that uh, on horseback. But knowing the Rhodesians, I think they, I think they probably did. Right folks, uh, the Omi Rhodesians. Um, same as normal, if you have any questions at all uh, about the figures, how I painted them, if you think you need to see something else, just leave a comment in the um, uh, on the video and um, I'll get back to you. I'll put some links in the video to the manufacturers um, uh, and also to the, uh, to the book I mentioned. If there's any interest, I've got uh, a really large collection of Rhodesian books and I was considering perhaps doing it um, sort of my top three or my top five books recommendations. If that's of interest to you, um, give us a shout uh, and we'll go from there. Um, if you've liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you're not a subscriber, uh, think about subscribing. It, um, it obviously gives me incentive to keep making the videos and you'll get advanced notification when they're released. Uh, easiest way to do that, you can do that from the main channel page. Alternatively, you can click the uh, button at the end of the video, which is in the bottom right hand corner, uh, and that as normal is the um, modern British 20mm Empress Infantryman. Okay, so uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.